All right, welcome back to another post commentary video. Uh, looks like we have a strong grassland engine start here with the Barnes Wall and the Common Nightingale. Uh, European Goldfinch is looking pretty good for the round one goal. Uh, it's also a good preemptive measure to get in place for the round four goal because our opponent will be playing some tucking birds, theoretically speaking. Passerine Specialist is looking like our bonus card here. If we can build out a strong grassland engine here, or at least a passable one, depending on what we see, that'll be good toward the round two goal. And I always hate seeing the food in the personal supply goal. It just forces you to play inefficiently, I feel. Looks like we're going to roll with this. Pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. Looks like I'm just paying extra special attention to my food spread here. Must be thinking of probably use the cherry on the nightingale, lay eggs, gain a worm, then play the barn swallow. There's nothing great in the tray, so we don't really get an advantage for going first here. Looks like our opponent kept a fish worm and a cherry in two cards. Plenty of fish eating birds that are good card drawing birds. Looks like we're going to lead with our common nightingale as planned. Our opponent drops a white-throated dipper, so immediately right off the bat, they're in a stronger card drawing position than we are. That's kind of a scary prospect, but we do have the makings of a very powerful grassland engine. So um, right now our card draw is revolving around the cycling of the barn swallow. So at some point, I'm going to have to draw a card here just to have that tucking fodder, because I don't want to get rid of the goldfinch. We see the sap sucker in the tray and the cerulean warbler. The warbler's a good bird, but I don't think we're going to go out of our way to grab it here. Gonna get our barn swallow down. Might be thinking about denying something from my opponent. Looks like I'm going for the warbler here. That's probably what I'm looking at for my forest bird. It's going to be easier to get that on the board than the European goldfinch, and it, the goldfinch is less important until the moment my opponent plays a tucking bird. And I do have the food for the warbler here. But I would imagine that I'm going to play the Barn Swallow. No, oh, I'm going to deny the Woodpecker. Got House Wren, Spotted Sandpiper, and Little Bustard in the tray. Nothing critical. Barn Swallow's going down. Pretty straightforward play. Looks like we're going to lay eggs, tuck the... Woodpecker and get the worm off the nightingale for the cerulean warbler. Looks like I'm looking at the house rend here to maybe do a double play. And I have the brown pelican to tuck on the swallow, so I could run eggs again, pick up a second worm, cycle the pelican, pick up the wren and then do a double play in the forest. Try to lock down that round goal. So we got our last activation of the round left. We'll pull off our double play and win the round goal. <laughs> and 
and we're looking at Forester and Breeding Manager. And I'm going to go with Breeding Manager here because I've got uh, already got two birds on the board that qualify. And the Goldfinch is coming up and also qualifies. I've already got one bird in the forest that doesn't qualify for Forester, so the top end of that is out of our reach. It's not that often I go for Breeding Manager, but this definitely looks like a Breeding Manager game. Looks like I'm deliberating pretty hard about it. Four points versus I'm looking at right now. I basically have a guaranteed three points off that breeding manager as long as I can get that goldfinch down. And there really is no guarantee that I'm going to see any more impactful forest birds. Especially with how limited my card drawing ability is right now. So it looks like my opponent played a second forest bird here and tied the wrong goal. We see the gain food action from our opponent. Looks like they played great tit. And I'm going for the food for the European goldfinch. So I lucked out and got the cherry and the wheat. Now I'm probably going to, knowing the way I think, I'm probably going to draw a single card and then run my grasslands, tuck that extra card I grabbed, and get the second wheat off the nightingale for the goldfinch and play that into the forest. And that'll give us three birds in one row for the round goal. And there we see Franklin's Gull from my opponent. So it's like, oh well. <laughs> so the heat is on now, and now I'm really looking at this goldfinch because my opponent gets... They're going to be incentivized to get a tucking bird in that grasslands even more than normal. Common blackbird is garbage, but that's okay because we need a garbage card to tuck under the swallow. In hindsight, looking at this, my opponent plays the Harrier. I wonder if I shouldn't have denied that Swayson's Hawk there. But... It's not necessarily... Cedar Waxwing is good. I'm denying the Swayson Talk isn't really something I necessarily would consider under normal circumstances. You kind of expect it's kind of a middle of the road grassland bird. Well, my opponent already played one predator here, so they could be kind of signaling that they have falcon or a rodentologist. And they did grab the Swayson Sock there with the Franklin's Gull. So I'm getting my goldfinch down just in time. Immediately after my opponent showed a tucking bird and now this just flat out cancels any effort uh, that my opponent puts into tucking with their predator. I'm actually probably going to tuck this Cedar Waxwing because it consumes cards on its on its own. So there my opponent shows the Grackle. And so the Cedar Waxwing consumes cards. It's going to be hard to keep that fed plus my Barn Swallow. My card quantity is just really bad at this point. Uh, makes sense to grab the Wood Stork. Uh, it's a good point bomb. And it looks like I secure the Rat for that Stork. I'm looking to get birds into my wetlands here, so when I take that draw card action, I can actually get a couple cards to keep that barn swallow fed. And now I can take the gain food action and get the fish and any other food and drop that stork in the wetlands. And I have, I'm doing good on eggs, I can discard an egg in the wetlands to draw an extra card. There we pick up a point. And having more bonus cards is always good. We'll pick up our third one off the stork. Here comes the food. It's really too bad we don't have any brown powers in the forest here. Very vanilla food gain action, just two food. And this is where my lack of card quantity hurts again. I don't have an extra fodder card to discard for a third food. My card quantity is really holding me back right now. 
So there we see the Swaysons. So my opponent is really stacking up a grassland. It's kind of a unconventional grasslands with those predators stacked up like that. But that's really kind of showing that maybe they have falcon or rodentologist. So now that they've got two tucking birds, I'm going to interrupt myself and comment on these bonus cards here. Multiple habitats is looking good. Uh, I chose that over Rodentologist because my opponent has sucked up all the predators. And I'm looking at getting the top end of that bonus card here. So we're seeing the flycatcher. I definitely want to deny that. But I also want to play it myself. Looking at Mute Swan here, that could help me pad out my card volume. I draw the Black Vulture here, and now I'm immediately thinking about playing this bird in the face of my opponent's Predators. The Vultures are not cards that I usually play. I think I've only ever played them once or twice, but right now, with the way my opponent is throwing down these Predators, and the fact that I already have the Goldfinch down, I'm really thinking about playing this vulture. And we pick up a point. So my opponent is tucking because they have three tuckers. Uh, and really they're overpowering my goldfinch's ability to cancel out points. So getting this vulture down is going to be incredibly impo important. And I'm looking at this thing as like, okay, zero point activation. But I need food, and my opponent has two predators, and even if they don't activate their predators, I'm stopping them from scoring points. So they're giving up a potential two points per turn. Uh, and then with their grackle, they tuck one and lay an egg, so they're scoring two points with the grackle. The goldfinch then cancels out half of those points. So really the goldfinch-vulture combo is kind of canceling out three points. It's a real strong deterrent for my opponent here. And that's got to be like the second or third time I've ever played Black Vulture or Turkey Vulture. I don't generally see them as that valuable, but this is that moment where, you know, paired up, especially with the European Goldfinch and with the way my opponent is building their grasslands, it's just a really effective combo right now. Flycatcher doesn't help with Birdbander. Scoring four points off it right now should be realistic to get a couple more birds down. That's why I chose that over Rodentologist. Now that I say that, so maybe my opponent has Falconer here. So I chose to tuck the Flycatcher. And I pick up the California Condor. And... Now I'm recalling that I'm probably going to play this as my second bird in the wetlands in order to just draw two cards and have some type of tucking fodder for my swallow. The California Condor is another bird that I just usually don't play that often. I've played it twice ever, three times ever, just like the vultures. I just usually don't see the value in it, but especially now I need that second body in the wetlands to help my card drawing capability and it qualifies for a bird bander and we see the bush tip from my opponent so they're just stacking the heck out of their grasslands here and they're just quickly overpowering my pink powered countermeasures to try to stop them and it's really at this point looking like they're running away with this game there we pick up large bird specialist one more large bird will get us three points there I'm kind of banking on the fact that I'll see a large bird before I see a second fish eating bird getting something like Benelli would be really great because it qualifies for both large bird and bird bander but yeah, just looking at that stacked grasslands, my opponent has just uh, really just overpowered 
any type of countermeasure I could match here. But honestly, I'm doing very well for as few cards as I'm looking at. My card quality is fairly high. So that's really been my saving grace up to this point. But now I'm really going to have to get something good off my next card draw action and or really hopefully see some great cards off my barn swallow coming up here and I'm analyzing my bonus cards i need one more multi-habitat bird for bird bander so that's realistic and then one more bird for large bird specialists to get me to the bottom three points and that's where the black vulture is actually helping with large bird specialists as well so the, and the condor as well so the Condor and the Vulture are really coming through on the bonus cards. And my opponent is either failing on their Predators or just flat out not using them. And the fact that they're not using them, it sucks that... Because I really need that food off the Vulture. But again, I greatly put a big dent in their really strong Grassland engine. And really, you can't ask for anything more. These two pink powers are just really being a major pain in the neck for my opponent right now. So there, the common buzzard, I believe the Oriole qualifies for Passerine. What are we looking at there? So we're at four birds there. And the common buzzard is actually looking pretty good with... Bird Bander and Large Bird Specialist here. And normally you'd be looking at throwing that buzzard over a card like California Condor, but the Condor is actually serving a pretty critical role as far as qualifying for bonus cards itself. So this is an instance where maybe you're going to want to play one of these crappy play on top predators like the Common Buzzard. And at this point, it's really becoming clear to me that my opponent is skipping those predators. And again, it really sucks because I would really like to have that food right now. But the silver lining is, is that I'm just shaving those points off their engine. So the round goal is food in the supply. They're sitting at three. And I have one if I... And they're going after me, so they're going to be able to gain food here and win the wrong goal after I gain food. That's kind of the advantage in this type of situation of going second. They can wait to see what I'm going to do. So I gain enough food to win the wrong goal, but now they can use their last action to just gain food and beat me on that. But I needed to gain food there anyway, because now I'm in position to play both of the cards I have in my hand, the Oriole and the Buzzard. And then that's just going to put me right back in square one, not having any cards to tuck under my barn swallow. So I'm thinking about taking the draw card action again, just so I can keep the efficiency up on my grassland engine. And I am filling up on eggs fairly quickly here. And they did gain food, so they won the round goal. Get a fresh round four tray. Nothing too devastating there. They can't get the house sparrow and get a tuck under it because their grasslands is full. So now my opponent has decided to uh, not skip their predators, and it makes a lot more sense because all that extra food they could have handed me. Could have helped me out toward the round goal as well and that was just further incentive for them to uh, not activate their predators so now once we're kind of past the point where we really need food we're starting to get food from our opponent so it's uh, the game's not over yet that food could come in handy but really we could have used that food in round three And my opponent is just going to spam their grasslands here. And 
and they just got that stacked grasslands. There's just really nothing you can do about that. Really, we've done everything we can here. The the goldfinch and the vulture really uh, served a, an amazing role in trying to curb whatever um, counter or whatever measures my opponent can muster here. So I'm just looking at this buzzard. It's not usually a card I play, but I'm looking at my bonus cards. I'm looking at how many turns are left in the game. I want to get the Oriole down. I want to get the buzzard down. I have the food for both of them. And I'm going to have to make sure to lay eggs twice in order to fill up my goldfinch to get that extra point off breeding manager. So I need to lay eggs twice. I need to play common buzzard. So I'm probably going to draw cards here in order to have that extra cycle off the barn swallow. And actually, now that I think about it, I think I actually forego that because it's actually worth more points to just lay the eggs on that turn. I don't think I fill up on eggs. So there we get some more useless food from our vulture. Thinking about something here. Yeah, so if I get this buzzer down and just lay eggs, looking at my food spread. so. This is actually, the Black Vulture is actually scoring me a point every turn now because with that column four bonus conversion in the grasslands, I can take that food I gain and turn it right into eggs. I'm looking real hard at Bird Bander here. And Large Bird Specialist thinking about this buzzard. Trying to figure out how I can score the maximum amount of points here. And really it's just Common Buzzard is that bird. And I spent a lot of time deliberating on what my best course of action was. And I finally came to the correct conclusion that playing Common Buzzard was the way to go. And I'm going to have to lay eggs twice three times here. So I got three activations left. I need to get four eggs on my goldfinch and two on my house wren. So there we see a double play from my opponent. Yeah, because their nest space was filling up really quick. They needed to get birds on the board. gonna come up one short on passerine specialist so that kind of sucks but there's really not much we can do about that at this point yeah I'm just gonna miss out on the barn swallow tux and we're not giving out any food I still got one food surplus and a potential of more on the way from the vulture I don't think my opponent was thinking of my bonus conversion here. And maybe they might have been disincentivized from activating their predators, but every time we get a food off the vulture now, we're just getting an egg. straightforward turns here making sure to get eggs on the goldfinch another food from the vulture uh, this food isn't really going to do too much for us because we only have one activation left and we're really relying on our eggs and bonus cards to carry us to the end, but my opponent's grassland is just looking very devastating. And 
and the last activation. Cut and dry. So we're going to lose this round goal very handily. And I'm not feeling that confident. We can see my opponent had Viticulturalist. So that, that double play they pulled off at the end really helped that. We did really great on our bonus cards. Things are looking good right now. My opponent comes back on the round goals and is going to come back pretty hard on eggs. And the top cards are just going to destroy me. 113 to 96. And 96 is a respectable score. Um, I mean, we really didn't have that impressive of a uh, board, really. It was a lot of countermeasures to our opponent, and we had a really average grassland engine. It really was our uh, bonus cards and our eggs that we did lay that really brought it home for us. So, good game to my opponent. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.